All right, welcome back to Dwarf Fortress. In this episode, I'm going to show how to set up a military squad and get them equipped. Uh, equipping door, uh, equipping your military in Dwarf Fortress is a little bit tricky. Uh, I've had a couple of times when I've uh, misconfigured something and it took me almost an hour to figure out what I did wrong. So this is one of those things that once you know how to do it and once you can once you've got it right, Dwarf Fortress gets a whole lot easier as you have properly equipped military. Uh two things can be properly trained. You think it to be reasonably skilled, uh, probably not your incredibly legendary combat types, but better than trying to run up to a, an invader and trying to punch them when they have your proper weapon. So, uh, last episode I pulled uh, pretty much the random top ten dwarves out of my uh, appropriately dwarves who are appropriate for military service pile. Uh, they are going to be an archer squad to man the currently uh, in construct uh, the new fortifications that are currently under construction uh, that will be hopefully protecting us from invasions. So uh, these are just basically ten random dwarves I pulled out, uh, pulled off the list. So I have uh, given them the. The archer uniform. Uh, it is a pre built uniform. So I will just kind of go over briefly how to uh, customize this a little bit. So if we go to capital M for materials, oops. right, of course. You have to move the selector around so that the proper uh, proper equipment is highlighted. And this is where the, the interface rarely starts to have issues. So if we go to materials now with the crossbow selected, we can go to steel crossbow. Actually, that did something wrong. So let's go over to uniforms and actually do this uh, properly. So select the archer uniform, and this is just the uh, the template. So you can change whatever. Uh, so this is basically leather armor. And let's also throw in a cloak. Let's do, let's remove this cloak. Okay, uh, this overclothing or uh, replace clothing basically tells them uh, do they put their armor on over what they're currently wearing, or do they take off what they're currently wearing and put on their armor? Uh, for a fortress of this size, it's not going to matter. I'm just going to let them keep their clothing on. It's a little bit less uh, less hassle, I think. But if you are limited to, let's say, one or two sets of armor, uh, you, you've just got your steel production up and running, or you're, you don't have the materials to produce steel, uh, but you've managed to scrounge up uh, and melt down enough steel items to get a set of armor. Uh, you would probably want them to uh, take off the steel armor when they go off duty so that the whoever's coming on duty can use the good armor. So let's delete that. Come over here. Well, I guess it doesn't really matter all that much. So they will have a cloak, uh, leather, the leather armor is the, uh, 
like the chest piece, leather headwear, leather legwear, uh, leather handwear, so gloves and leather footwear, basically just leather boots. The crossbow, let's look at the material of the crossbow. So usually it, it defaults to any material, but let's make it so that they have to use uh, steel. Sorry, leather armor. With the crossbow selected, go down to the steel, and they will pick up any steel crossbow. Um, you can do bone, wood crossbows. Um, I don't really do them. It doesn't matter from a from the standpoint of using it to shoot something, but let's say you run out of arrows, you still got one guy, if you whack someone on the head with a featherwood bow, uh, featherwood crossbow, featherwood weighs basically nothing, uh, you're using your crossbow as an improvised, improvised melee weapon, basically improvised hammer, so trying to kill someone by whacking on the head with a featherwood, which is basically balsa wood, uh, crossbow, it's not going to hurt your crossbow. It's also not going to kill them. Uh, if you do, if you use a uh, steel crossbow, run out of uh, bolts, you still got someone alive. You need to whack them on the head to try and kill them. It's going to be a whole lot more efficient. It's not going to be nearly as efficient as a proper steel hammer or whatever. Uh, but you do actually stand a chance of killing them with it. So. Go ahead and select steel. So they're now using steel crossbows. Uh, color, you can have, uh, you can customize the uh, the look of your military to pretty much no end. But you can have uh, dyed armor, dyed, I don't think you can actually dye weapons, but Uh, there is no shield, as the crossbow is a two-handed weapon. Uh, under the weapons category, you have individual choice, uh, basically whatever you're good at. Um, there is a thing where if you if you have a squad that only uses axes, uh, they do get a, I believe, a small bonus to training. Basically, one person will either get really good through kills or through uh, just personality, and they will be able to demonstrate an axe technique, uh, and the entire squad will be able to benefit from that. If you have a mixed weapon squad, uh, you might have your legendary axe user who's got 30, 40, 50 kills uh, trying to demonstrate an axe technique to a bunch of people using hammers, maces, swords, it doesn't really work quite as well. So I, I like to keep all of my squads using a single weapon. Uh, individ uh, individual choice, uh, melee, basically pick whatever melee type weapon you like. Uh, same thing, individual choice ranged, uh, pick whatever you want so long as it is classified as a ranged weapon. Uh, crossbows, maces, spears, short swords, war hammers, battle axes. Uh, those are your uh, combat quality weapons. Then you have training swords, training spears, uh, training axes. Uh, basically, they're wooden. You're going to have to try really, really hard to hurt someone with them. Uh, currently, my uh, my axe dwarf squad is steel plated, steel axes, legendary. Beyond all belief, you do not want to run into these guys in combat. Uh, they're sparring with their combat weapons. Realistically, unless they try, they're not going to hurt each other. Uh, I've had a couple of them maybe get a couple of bumps and bruises when they fell down, uh, but that was entirely because I had part of their sparring area uh, over a pit, so entirely my fault on that. Uh, whips, picks, bows, blowguns, all this 
Now, all these are labeled as foreign. Uh, yes, you can acquire them, but no, you cannot make them. Uh, I don't know of any, uh, well, aside from not being able to make them, uh, I don't think there's any real downside to using them. It's better than having, better than not having a weapon entirely. But usually I just melt all these items down into uh, metal, rebuild something that I, that's going to be a lot better quality and fit in better with the doors. So we have the uniform, so let's go back to the equipment tab, select the squad. Let's give them assigned uniforms, capital U. And then here we have uh, more uh, text glitching. Let's scroll over, select the archer, and shift enter to use everything from the squad. Then escape to be done. Oops, wrong button. Uh, back to the military. Equipment. Okay, so here we have leather, uh, leather armor, leather, or leather armor, cloak, leather headwear, and they're all having uh, steel crossbows. So as soon as the steel crossbow order gets finished, uh, they will hopefully go and grab. grab their weapons. Uh, something to keep in mind, going back over to Door Therapist, uh, miners are required, uh, basically in order to be a miner, they're going to grab a pick. Uh, the pick can be used as a weapon, uh, despite being uh, shown as a foreign weapon. There is some issue trying to get your miners to also be military ready. Uh, what I am trying to do is figure out a way to get them some light armor, probably either copper or leather, just so that as they go mining, if they run into anything in a cave or something, uh, they've got some something besides just regular civilian clothing. Uh, the miners will use their mining skill uh, instead of say an axe dwarf would use their axe skill, a miner will use their mining skill when uh, doing their attack. So all of these legendary miners are basically legendary pick users. And I do believe the picks are very devastating when it comes to combat. So as long as they're not killed pretty much instantly, uh, these legendary Miners do stand a very, very good chance of killing anything that tries to attack them. Uh, wood cutting is required. Uh, you're required to have an axe. Which I believe. Little blockades. Oh, right. Uh, I'm doing something very similar with uh, my woodcutters. I'm going to give them uh, light armor, uh, basically not steel armor, uh, but light armor and a steel battle axe, basically. Uh, all axes are functionally equivalent when it comes to cutting wood. So when they're out there, if they get jumped by an ambush, uh, they've got something that they can... They have some way of defending themselves and some sort of armor on so that they actually stand a little bit of a chance. Uh, again, uh, this woodcutting uses, I believe, the same axe skill. Does that actually apply to the woodcutting? No, it does not. Um, 
so there's they do stand a little bit of a chance instead of just being kind of completely and utterly helpless. And finally, the hunting skill uses crossbows. So if you look under ambusher, these should be the uh, the hunters. So yes, under profession, it's hunter, uh, grandmaster ambusher. So just the ability to sneak up on your enemy, something that you would hunt for food. Uh, accomplished marksworth. If uh, as you train hunting, the marksworth skill will also increase. I uh, I do not believe it works the other way. So you can have uh, better marksworths than hunters. No, I am actually correct in that. So as the well, no, that's not necessarily true. But anyway, um, your mark scores are required to use, or your hunters use um, crossbows. Same with your mark scores. So if you can get your hunters uh, military grade great equipment, uh, weapons and whatnot. Uh, most people either hunt with wooden or bone bolts. Um, I've got enough uh, bronze and copper sitting around that I can hunt with copper and bronze uh, bolts. So again, if something happens and one of my hunters slash mark stores gets caught, in, caught out in ambush, um, they'll have a little bit of armor, probably not uh, something great, but it's lighter than can move in military grade weapon, military grade ammo, they stand a chance of killing two or three, well, two, maybe three attackers, which is a lot better than what uh, most dwarves can uh, hope to have. So that pretty much covers the uh, kind of cross-training skills. So going back to Dwarf Fortress, we have the uh, newly minted uh, Markstorf squad. The next thing that we need to do is get some armor for them. So go over to the manager, view in new order, weather, now um, the minor issue with leather is that you can have leather clothing and you can also have leather um, armor so let's make leather armor 1 to 20 so Leather helmet twenty leather leather oops and here I need to select one and remove that order. Leather high boot and those. So dwarves have a head, chest, legs, feet, uh, hands, and it's more of a uh, neck, uh, neck and back type of or uh, yeah, neck and back type of slot for armor. So, helmet, armor, um, pants, boots, gloves, and then uh, cloaks fill the neck slash back slot. Leather. I believe leather leggings is the armor version of this. And leather. Boots, buildings. I still need the leather gloves. So, lev 
leather gauntlets twenty. So twenty, forty, sixty, eighty, hundred. Now we just need to make sure that we have enough le uh, enough leather to fill this order. Over to the stockpiles with Z stocks. And not entirely sure why those were forbidden, but I'm forbid that. And go ahead and forbid these so that they're collected. be on the next page. Uh, this menu, page up and page down, to change between the pages. Oh, boxes, bags. Let's actually unforbid these. I think there's something going on with um, my chests. Barrels, unforbid. Buckets and forbid. Now here it is, canned hides. Now this is your uh, basically leather stockpile. In uh, Vanilla Dwarf Fortress, this would be filled with everything from chicken leather to uh, chicken leather, cat leather, dog leather. Uh, yak leather, horse leather, donkey leather, uh, the modest mod simply reduces everything to a generic leather, uh, just leather, leather is leather, it's all the same. It saves on a bunch of record keeping that has to be done. So I have 200, uh, 263 leather, so I do have enough to get this produced. Jumping back over to Dwarf Therapist, let's make sure that the leather workers it's not doing nothing. I don't have a lot of leather workers, so let's go ahead and trim this to my two best. Woodcrafting, not sure why these have much woodcrafting. Similar thing with stone crafting. Bone carving, uh, this is mostly for making bone bolts. Uh, glass making, turn this down a little bit. Uh, weaving and clothes making, these two. Uh, weaving and clothes making, you're going to inevitably have uh, a need, well, you need to get those set up before too, too long. Uh, next video, I will be making a bunch of clothing, making sure that production chain. But I just kind of need to check this, and I might—I well figured I might as well show it in this video. Uh, strand extraction, I haven't gotten to yet. That's uh, lots of fun to get into. Uh, pottery, uh, not really all that useful. Uh, glazing is for pottery, and wax working is entirely wax working and beekeeping. Uh, somewhat limited to use, but it's something else that you can trade. I personally don't use it all that much, but I might get into it a little bit. So, uh, these changes are marked as pending. Uh, make sure that you commit the changes, otherwise they won't actually show up in the Dwarf Fortress. So, we should now have a couple of our leather workers start to crank out some leather armor. So the next thing we need to do, we now have the squad uh, set up, we have their equipment selected, we have their equipment being produced. Let's go back to the military supplies. This is kind of what they carry on them. Um, they're going to need, in addition to whatever armor 
and weapon, possibly ammo. You're going to need a flask to carry drink in and a backpack to carry food in. Basically what this is, is let's say they're out on patrol, they've got 15 minutes or whatever, just think you're out on patrol, you've got 15 minutes, you can sit down, grab a drink, grab a bite to eat, go back on, uh, go back out and finish your patrol. Basically, if you were on duty uh, and you, you get hungry, you can chip into this instead of having to go off duty, go down to the kitchen or whatever and get a proper meal. Related note, this isn't going to be nearly as good as a proper meal, but it keeps your military from going hungry while they're out on patrol or out doing whatever. So, uh, under drinks, you have uh, plus and minus to change this. This will carry any drink. Uh, this will carry only water. And this will not carry a drink. Uh, there's really no reason not to have them carry something you prefer. So they'll pick up some alcohol. And I have enough food floating around that uh, you have either do not carry food, one, two, or three. I just have three food, so they can stay out for stay out on patrol longer. So that's the equipment. Ammunition. Uh, hunters are going to use bolts. They're going to carry a hundred. Uh, you can vary this. I just might as well leave it alone. Actually, what I think I'm going to do is increase the amount to 200. So, uh, this squad does not use ammunition. This one does. I'm going to increase this to... Uh, let's say the ammunition is made in stacks of... Uh, Made in stacks of 25. So I'm going to actually change this material. We're going to add an item. Oops. Uh, military supplies. Uh, sorry, ammunition. Uh, the hunters are going to just use any bolts. This is going to be um, so this is the combat ready squad, so we're going to change the material. And we're going to use okay. So selecting the uh, let's see where are we? Yes, uh, selecting the bolts, and we're picking out the material, wood, blocks of wood, um, metal, oh right, uh, so bronze bolts instead of copper bolts. And we're going to let them use let's say five hundred. I do think there is a limit of sorts on the uh, amount of bolts that they'll carry, but this sort of says, okay, this this squad has five hundred bolts. Um, kind of designated to them. Uh, another squad with no ammunition, it just means that the uh, squad uses melee weapons. So this is going to be the training squad. So I'm going to use bolts of Copper. Uh, 
and I'm also going to add bolts. Material and bronze. So hopefully this squad will uh, try to use some of the copper bolts. And let's change this to 200, 150 bronze bolts and 250 copper bolts. So hopefully they'll prefer the copper bolts over the bronze bolts. I'm not sure if it'll work, but maybe we can get rid of some of the copper bolts. Another squad that uses melee, and this is another training squad for now. So let's do material and 250 copper, add item, bolts, and 50 of material type bronze. Uh, there is a bit of a bug if you go between uh, combat and uh, combat ammunition and training ammunition. Um, basically they they have to set down their training ammunition, pick up their combat ammunition, and it can delay your uh, fortress response time by quite a bit. So I just let them use use everything, uh, or use whatever they were going to use all the time. Also what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the copper bolts, increase to 300, and use the copper bolts for the hunters. So hopefully that will help decrease the uh, rather significant stockpile of uh, copper ammunition that I have. The final thing that I should cover just to uh, have it out there as it has uh, it has come up once for me uh, before and if you're using military or or rather if you have a military that is using uh, very high quality equipment uh, there is an issue or rather uh, Doors that create masterwork uh, items will have bad thoughts if their masterwork uh, creations are destroyed. Uh, there's not an issue trading them, and there's not an issue if they let's say a dwarf creates a masterwork, uh, a set of masterwork bolts. If the bolt is shot and shatters, that's not an issue. If the bolt is shot, sticks in a, in a uh, hits an invader and gets stuck in them, and then that invader leaves, the dwarf will get a negative thought from losing their masterwork uh, item. There is sort of a uh, well, there's only really one way of dealing with it, is simply make, uh, make more masterwork items. The, th uh, the happiness uh, thought penalty is the number of items destroyed divided by the total number of items. So if you have your masterwork bolt maker uh, sitting around pretty much all the time creating uh, masterwork ammunition, they're going to create easily hundreds, if not, well, easily thousands, if not tens of thousands of uh, masterwork bolts. So if two or three of them run off the map and they get a little upset, they're not even going to notice. They're going to be more upset about uh, not having their favorite alcohol to drink. So uh, it is something to keep in mind. Uh, if you have your masterwork uh, weaponsmith, and let's say you've uh, you've got a newer squad, so 
they go out to repel invaders. Uh, some or most of them get killed, and before your uh, dwarves can come out and reclaim all their equipment and whatnot, a group of monkeys or whatever come in and start stealing items off the map. Uh, it is potentially... Uh, it is possible that the monkeys could come in and steal the master work equipment from your fallen dwarves. Uh, in that case, uh, just do the same thing, create more masterwork things, and hope that the uh, dwarf doesn't go get all uh, upset over losing the thing before they can uh, produce more. Uh, temporary stopgap measure, give them a pet, but uh, just kind of try your try your best to have uh, have them get happy again. So, this is, let's see, this is the new military squad with the proper ammunition. So, now we have to go over here and check the, uh, these two waypoints. This is the training pit, number one and number two. So, going back to the military, uh, S for schedule. And uh, plus and minus keys to scroll between squads. And it is the Sivri. Squad. Sivri Shadows. So with them selected, give order, and then O to cycle between. We're going to have them patrol the training pit. Uh, you're going to want to change the maximum number of soldiers. It starts at 10, which basically means the entire squad at all times is patrolling. Uh, if you have, if you reduce this to, say, 2 or 3, it means that two or three out of the ten positions are going to be patrolling. That gives the other, the remainder of the squad, a chance to go lay down, get some sleep, uh, go get some food, go off duty for whatever reason, uh, sit back, relax, not have to be patrolling. It helps with their mood. So we're going to go with uh, three soldiers minimum. Change over to the appropriate uh, texture so it depends. Stops things uh, being silly, and then shift into it to, do, uh, to be done. So we now have the silvery shadows with a mixed order. Uh, train is ten minimum. We need to get rid of that order. So X to cancel. So we now have them uh, patrolling the training pit with three members. So. Uh, C to copy that order, and then just uh, up and down arrow keys to paste that order in. I do the sweep and room at will. Uh, basically, if they're off duty and they're tired, they can go to their room instead of the barracks. I don't have barracks set up, so it's kind of pointless. I just uh, leave it like that. Uh, if they are inactive, they will keep their uniform on. Saves them time from having to go find their uniform, put it on, and whatnot. Uh, however, it does mean that their uniform is constantly in use. So you can't uh, share uniforms uh, between uh, units. And that's pretty much it. So we're done with this, and let's change back over to the other font. So now that that's done, let's go ahead and let the new squad uh, start their patrol.
And actually what I should do is go back to the schedule. Let's reduce this other squad's uh, training pit patrol down to uh, E to edit the order. Let's reduce that down to 1. And shift enter for done. So they are patrolling the training pit with one member. So copy that order, Oops. and paste that down for the entire year. OK. So a couple of them should be going off duty now, and a couple of the other military should be coming start patrolling in time now. So, uh, now that this military has been set up, it's just going to be an issue of uh, and it looks like let's do squad so S for squad and then F for the Silvery Shadows, P to select individuals. Uh, actually, that's not going to work. Let's go to uh, A for alerts. And I'm going to move my Dwarf Therapist over to my other, other monitor for a second. Uh, doo -doo -doo. No, it looks like this was just a changing of the other patrol. Okay, I'm coming up here for a second to check on... Just checking on the uh, progress up here. And it looks like things are getting worked on. So, uh, it's going to take the dwarves a uh, couple of days to get all their affairs in order, pick up their new, new equipment, new ammunition, and start patrolling. But, this is actually uh, quite a bit over my uh, intended uh, time allotment for the video, but that is the how to set up a military squad pretty much from scratch in Dwarf Fortress. Uh, it's important enough and complicated enough that it's well worth the time. So, uh, next time I will check on the warps a little bit, maybe let the game progress up to a save point a little bit further, and kind of otherwise see how it goes. Although, we do have combat. We have a hammer dwarf getting attacked by a dingo. So, on the uh, something to leave on, let's look at this. Uh, yes, apparently a dingo decided to attack a hammer dwarf and died. So, no real surprise there. We do have some uh, pretty well trained uh, dwarves roaming around, so wild animals really aren't that big of a deal anymore. 
So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and cut the video here. And uh, next time is just going to be a little bit more progressing uh, through the fort, trying to get some things built. So until next time, stay safe and try to keep your dwarves away from uh, giant badgers.